today, this is your girl, Morello Kane. You guys know me, okay? Yes, I am the founder of The Hair Debate, author of Seven Love Languages of Hair, and have a very, very um, great live today. And so we're going to wait on hello, hello, thank you for joining me, hello there. Yes, my name is Morello Kane. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. Oh, we're going to talk about hair detangling. Hi there. Hello there. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Hello there. And um, I actually started talking before you guys started coming in. So let me just, again, introduce myself. My name is Morello Kane. I'm the founder of The Hair Debate and also author of Seven Love Languages of Hair. And so I am going to be discussing with you guys today, you know, of, um, hello there, of the 20 something years as a master cosmetologist, um, of my experience. What I love about hair, um, because I'm just gonna keep it real, I'm not the best styler, okay? Some people trump it down, hands down, you, you just, you're all that. Okay, you show me a picture, I can do it, get it close to it or whatnot. But if you sit in my chair and say, oh, just, you know, do whatever you like. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That doesn't work for me. So with that being said, uh, but my passion is hair care. And, um, and I guess from me battling uh, with my hair, then, you know, the, the passion is real. The passion is real because I take part of a client's hair as though it is mine. And so I know what hair, hair feels like. It's almost in an in obsession to actually feel that of what not, um, healthy hair feels like. And so we're going to discuss today, um, you know, several things that affect detangling. And what is that? Okay. And so how do you detangle your hair? And so let me just say that um, so now let's talk about if your hair is, if you're coming out of braids. Okay. So if you're coming out of braids, when is the best time to detangle that hair? Okay. Um, because I, I have it just split down the center. I would have clients that would say the best time to detangle their hair would be, um, Right after they've taken it out, you have a conditioner in there. So while the conditioner is in there, then let me detangle. Okay, let's put a fork right there. And then you have others that would say, no, when I take my hair out of the braids, I'm detangling right then. Okay, who, okay, so who is that out there? You know, what do you experience um, or, or what is your experience when you're taking out braids? Do you do it at the time? of when you initially take the braids out or is it done after you shampoo you have the conditioner on well let me just say the best time to do that is at the time of taking the braids out okay so now but now let me say this um if the hair and it depends on because everyone goes their time period of, of how long they keep braids in some of you at you know they almost turn to dreads Okay, they've been in so long, you know, with the braids. Okay, and so um, if it's at that point, then I'm going to say, then I would put conditional on it prior to detangling, prior to shampooing, place a conditioner on there, work that conditioner in the hair, allow it to soften up some, and then start detangling. Now, what you want to do... Mm, is detangle from the ends. So you want to get it from the ends and you want to start, you know, just taking the hair, just, you know, working your way up. Now, does it feel like it takes forever and your arm gets higher? Well, yes. But now again, that's the reason why you see your hair care provider. Okay, because yes, your arm, it, it will wear you down. So again, you're taking it out from the ends, going up to the roots. And that's how you want to initially start. Okay, so now, say you've kept the braids in, month and a half, no longer than two months, you take it out, um, 
you know, it, it's a little residue, but you're able just to kind of move your hair around like that. It comes apart and, and you basically can't, you know, kind of finger through your hair. Well, let me just say at that point, then you would section it off and detangle. Okay. And this would be part two shampooing. All right. You've taken the braids out. You had not had them in for so long. Hello there. And at this point, you're able to start, you know, combing it out from the roots up to the, um, from the ends up to the roots. That's what you will want to do. Okay. So now, um, you have individuals that, you know, they, they're kind of scared to detangle the hair because, you know, they're afraid of what they may see. Okay, they're afraid of what they may see. You know, what is considered a um, healthy shed of hair? You know, you comb the hair out. And let me say to you that um, hair has a lifespan of six years on the head. Okay, lifespan. Okay, also too with that, um, it has, um, you, know, every, you know, hair has its phases. That it goes through. So there's the shedding phase. There is called a phase. There is a phase called shedding. You know, we don't want to hear that, but but it is just as it is with growth. You know, um, it uh, a point in time when it just does not do anything at all. It, it rests, and so you know these are the things that you you have to because that's the science behind hair is understanding that. Okay, so with now understanding that. You know, you have to understand at some point in time, you're going to have some shedding. I'm, and, and let me just say the majority, because 100 strands a day of shedding is normal, you know. So, you know, I know you guys don't want to see that at all. But I, I did collect, um, I have some hair here that I'm wanting to talk about what would be considered as um, a normal, you know, shedding what is considered normal shedding because you know clients would think that and especially you know you've been quarantined um not being able to see your hair care provider if you went to them regularly um but then understanding too that how often you comb through your hair from roots to ends will determine how much hair is going to be in the comb okay so now let me say this um, and, and please don't, you know, I, I mean, there are times when you do want to use a fine tooth comb, but then also too, you know, um, you don't, you don't want to just like you, you have to baby the hair because if you have to baby the hair as though, you know, if you comb through it, you scared hair is going to come out, then it's weak. Okay. It's weak. And at that point you should be looking at treatments. And so, um, but again, depending upon the number of days that you are combing your hair so if you're not combing your hair in three days then you know if you see um some hair and it looks like about this amount okay that you comb out you know and you want to say oh my hair is shedding no that's normal shedding okay for three days that you have not combed through your hair from roots to ends. That hair has shaded from the from the roots of the scalp. Um, it has shaded, and at this point, um, it has nowhere to go. You know, you have not combed it through. It's just kind of sitting in the hair. So when you're combing it through that third day, then you're going to see the collected strands. Okay. So now, um, I was just talking about here, and let me just put my glove. Boy, I take I. Is real going to the nail salon. So as I put my gloves on here, I want to show you what a bulb looks like on the other end of a hair strand. That's when you know that uh, when the bulb on the hair strand is present, um, it's very tiny. So I have on a black glove, so I'm gonna hold it against my hand here that you can see it. And then also too, um, but then also too, you can feel it. So, you know, when you kind of rub your fingers across that strand of hair, you can actually feel that bulb on the end of that hair strand. And so, um, but let me just share this with you. So my client went to the nail salon and this is the reason why I'm actually nervous about going back to one. Um, she went to the nail salon and she 
you know, got seated among some other customers that was there. And so when she went to, um, she said, you know, her thoughts were, let me just see what they do after these customers get up and, and they leave and whatnot. And come to find out the customers got up, walked out, left, but um, they did not wipe the seats down, sanitize, nor in or um, sterilize. And so, um, how nasty, okay? So that's the reason why I'm actually nervous about going into, because going back into um, the nail salon, because again, I know how I clean my salon, but you know, how you clean is different from someone else. Okay, so now, ooh, they thought that's so serious. Let me go ahead and get through this line. Okay, um, and if you can see here, let me see. I'm trying to position this. Let's see. I'm trying to position this in such a way that you can see. Let me find what above. Okay, so that's a split end. I can actually see that. Where is... There's my bug. Oh, okay. So, let's see. okay, against my skin, you can actually see it. So you can see it right there. There's the bug on that end. And let me see. Oh, you, you maybe can't tell that that strand where is it at? It's actually split. I can see it. Um, and so, again, when you run your finger against that bulb, you can literally feel the bulb on the tip. And that's how you know that the hair um, actually um, is shedding, that it's not breaking. When you can see, again, that bulb on the ends. And that's normal. You cannot stop that. Okay, so let's now. I had a client. Came in from um, from a different state and uh, was serviced. Had braids in for three months. You know, I took the braids out. Okay, so this is her breakage for three months. So now let me just say this. Is that excessive? It is. But also, too, I'm looking, you know, uh, when I initially had taken it out, I'm looking at how dry, dull it looks. Um, and again, you know, having to shed this much of hair and, you know, having braids in for three months, this is excessive. Okay. But, and so that shows me that her hair is not moisture balanced. She, she needs a protein reconstructor. And, um... And then following back up with, you know, moisture treatments from that, as well as um, using moisture products when she has her braids on going forward. Okay. Now, so now, would you say that this was excessive for two months? For two months? Hmm. What are your thoughts? Well, I would say not at all. Um, because, okay, understanding that we, we're talking about um, 30 days at um, where you are shedding, okay? We're 100 strands a day. You know, we're talking about six a day. So, yeah, like this would be, uh, right. actually, this would be really good. Two months, say if you had a sew in for two months and you comb your hair out and this is all that actually shedded, amazing. You know, amazing. You know, um, but still this texture could use some more moisture, you know, looking at it. Okay, so now, how about this? So now, having comb your hair in a week's time. Would this be sufficient? Okay. In a week's time. I 
I would say yes. In a week's time, if a person had um had not combed through their hair or and or is combing through their hair and have collective because that's what I do. If I have a client that feels that their hair is shedding, um, I have them prior to their appointment to come in to collect what hair the number of days and then you know I'm just like okay this is normal or you know what is not and you know so let's talk what's been going on so you know is that you know um you know either I'm talking to them about getting in sooner something to that effect but then let me ask you guys can you see the difference trying to can you tell that this hair is more shinier than this that this is more dull it actually looks like a ash gray against the light and this actually has a shiny you know so more moisture balance and so you know having when you you see this and you just like okay um you're good we just need to you know we're going to watch it you know so where it will not become more excessive than this and um but it's understanding again that you know what is what um you know again determine your shedding if your hair is shedding determine that according to how many days that you're going in between combing your hair from roots to ends. Okay. Um, also to understand that um, hair has a lifespan of six years. Shedding is a part of the process. What you want to do. And this is a tip. What you want to do is, is make sure your hair is at its healthiest. Okay. Healthiest. And that's your hair. That's your insides. Because... When you do hit that phase for your hair to shed, you want it to be at its minimum, okay? Because the hair is so strong and so healthy, the only thing that's actually shedding is the hair that has this deplenished its lifespan. And so, you know, just keeping that in mind. Again, my name is Morello Kane. Um, please do um, spread the word. Share our page. I will be here with you every Monday at 7 o'clock. Also, we'll be posting your questions. Let me know questions that you have to where I want to make sure that, you know, I address um, any issues that you guys may have or anything that we need to discuss on the show. Um, we do have a YouTube page, okay, at The Hair Debate. You know, definitely subscribe, okay, hit the notification. Know when we are uploading our footage. Um, and so, again, I thank you so much. I thank you. We're also on Facebook. And um, again, my name is Morello Kane. This is the platform where we debunk, debate, and discover all things here.